What's going on guys? We're back with another dose of some vitamins for your tech health. This time a little bit of audio stuff. Um, so we're going to be looking at two different mics and I'm going to compare them. And uh, this is not a straight up comparison to show you which one is better than the other because obviously if you're going to pay $1,600 for one mic it should be better than a $300 mic. But what I'm going to try to or attempt to show you is that by getting the correct uh, preamp you can pretty much make a $300 mic sound almost uh, indistinguishable from a $1600 mic so the two mics that we're comparing um, is the Newman TLM 49 which retails again around $1600 and then let's take a look at the second one it's the uh, MXL V87 it's a $300 uh, condenser mic in terms of the specs uh, the frequency range is the same. We got 20 um, hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, but what does matter on this, or what's uh, better on the Newman mic, is the uh, ohm rating, which this impedance is at 50 ohms compared to the MXL mic is a uh, 200, and uh, that's actually an important uh, spec to look at when purchasing mics. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna hook it up to the uh, Universal Audio 710 Twinfinity preamp. It's both a solid state and a uh, let me see if we can get some, a little bit more light on there. Solid state and a tube amp. Um, so both mics are going to be going into here and we're going to be taking four different takes. Um, we're going to do two uh, takes on 100% tube for each mic and then two takes for uh, on 100% solid state um, amp preamp setting. And we're gonna have our sexy Miss Minx uh, do the do the takes. Here she is right now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that. We're using Pro Tools 9 to record this, and I'll let you guys be the judge at the end. Um, which one sounds better? Are you ready? All right. Yep. This is the uh, Newman 100% uh, tube setting. Let's get it started. And now the hundred percent tube test. <clears throat> And let's do another test with 100% uh, solid state setting. Alright, and next we're going to do the uh, MXL87. Okay, I'm ready now. I'm wondering how you can 
Okay, so now that you had a chance to listen to uh, both microphones, um, definitely let me know what you think in our comments. And the next thing I want to look at is how do the specs of these mics kind of show up in the wave file and the definition? Can we be, you know, can we tell at all what's going on? So let me zoom in and uh, let me pick, let me take my MXL V87 solid state version and compare it to the uh, Neumann solid state version and uh, hopefully you guys could see this but uh, this take was recorded at 96 kilohertz and 24 bits and it, if you can tell in this wave file there's just more definition or more color saturation in the, in the wave file the way it comes out it, you know it's, it's like more detailed if you look at the, the curvature of the curves of the little uh, wave and even there's I feel like there's more amount of peaks, more definition in the vocal itself. That is caused by the lower ohm rating on the Neumann mic. Uh, the Neumann mic is rated at 50 ohms resistance. Um, and the MXL V87 is rated at 200 ohms. And I guess I'll try to simply explain it. Basically, that's the resistance of the vocal waves or the... Uh, the voice being transferred directly into electrical current and being then displayed on the screen as a wave file. So the less resistance you have, the better the wave, the sound waves are going to be transferred through electrical current into wave file, giving you more definition. But at the same time, it doesn't always mean that it's going to be a better sounding mic. There's some mics out there like uh, blue mics or some AKG high priced mics that have 200. Um, ohm rating the same as uh, the MXL mic and the frequency so you know so it's really about what you um, think sounds better as an engineer or as a uh, musical um, artist so I mean I'm not a professional music engineer but I am an engineer by trade or I went to school for engineering uh, for a little over four years and then I successfully dropped out but uh, that's a story for another day but you know I, th I think I have enough knowledge to be able to compare these specs and kind of let you know what you should be looking at. I've also done a lot of research before looking into this and you know people that have tried out the Neumann mic say um, that since it was built for vocals you're either going to hate it or you're going to love it. You know, But my preference in this is to I guess stick with the MXL V87 mic. I do like uh, how it sounds a little bit deeper I guess. It's not so much treble and also what I want to show you is that I'm going to add one more thing I want to do to kind of compare these two vocal takes also is to add some um, plugins and I already have them added here. I'm uh, adding a simple gate to get rid of some of the low frequency sounds, kind of the hiss in my uh, booth, so-called booth, because it's not the you know best acoustical space. Let me get rid of that uh, for recording. But then I have a Waves plugin uh, equalizer right here, the v VEQ4 uh, set on the vocal setting. Then I have a C4 compressor for waves again set on the uh, let's see the, the vocal setting, and then I have a simple deesser set to the, the which comes with Pro Tools um, set on the female setting, and then I'm routing uh, both of these tracks into a, an effects uh, auxiliary track which has Trueverb from Waves on it, and again this one just has the simple um, vocal spread. Uh, preset setup, so yeah, I'm not gonna do too much uh, mixing and uh, plug-in effects on this voice, but I just want you to hear the difference now in in these two takes. So let's go ahead and take a listen to those. Let me unmute the mix 87 first. Let's play that. Alright, and let's take a listen to the Neumann mic with the same plugins and settings.
All right, so the instrumentals turn on a little bit, and if you did hear, uh, same thing I heard, the uh, Neumann mic is a little bit, like I said before, there's more treble in it, the, the higher frequencies are more transparent in it. It was almost like um, piercing through, uh, you know, some of the frequencies. Sometimes it almost sounds uncomfortable unless you mix it or don't add any compression or equalizer to it, which I've also read that this mic is perfect pretty much out of the box. It doesn't need a lot of... Uh, plugins added to it because of how um, you know strong it is in delivering the sound to you so and you know it's also been said that uh, anything recorded as far as uh, vocal wise goes on, on this mic really gets through a muddy mix you know so if, if you have a lot of instruments or a lot of lows or uh, like dirty mids then just simply recording with this mic will be it will do a better job of getting through the mix so again, you know, it's your choice. Um, you let me know, anybody that has this mic, if they love it or hate it or why they love it and uh, the reasons and such. And leave comments. Hopefully this was helpful to anybody that's um, looking to buy a new mic and you know, realizing that a preamp may be what you're really looking for. And hopefully you make the right decision because you know, $1,000 or over for home studio for hobbyists is, is a lot to spend. So... Make sure you make the right choice. Do the research. Let me know if you need any help. Peace.